Welcome to Whiskey's The Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano. And today, this is my Monday series, my current Monday series, where I'm looking at peated single malt scotches. Today, we're looking at Ardbeg Oogadal. It's an Isla peated single malt scotch coming in at 54.2% ABV. It's non-chill filtered, doesn't say anything about natural color, but I have a feeling or a sneaking suspicion that it is natural color. If you know any different, let me know in the comments down below. This is a non-age stated single malt scotch, and I'm gonna touch on that a little bit when I get into the history of Ardbeg, but it's rumored to be somewhere around 10 years. I think they're using their 10 year Ardbeg in here. The cask maturation on this is going to be the X bourbon and the X sherry casks. My guess is it's Oloroso sherry casks, but I'm not positive. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. The current bottle that I'm looking at and the only bottle of Ardbeg Oogadal that I've ever had, this was actually bottled in November 15th of 2021. It's a 750 milliliter bottle. And at the time that I paid for it, I paid $72.99. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and the current going price of this is $101. So I purchased this about a year and a half ago. So that should give you an idea of what's going on with the price increases with whiskey. So like always, let's go ahead and pour it. Knows it tastes to talk about it a little bit. And then if you stick around to the end, I'm going to go ahead and give it a score. And if you are not subscribed to the channel and you like this information after you watch the video, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Do all those things that YouTubers ask you to do like, comment down below, turn that bell notification on because I produce videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All right, here we go. If you are not new to the channel, you know that I like sherry scotches, but I do have to let you know that my affinity for sherry matured or sherry finished scotches or in general, sherry finished or sherry matured whiskeys is starting to wane a little bit, maybe getting a little bit tired of the profile. So. Stay tuned for that. See if I'm going to start swaying a little bit more towards the ex bourbon. I can tell you just rolling this in the glass, it's very potent. So let's go and get it on the nose. All right, right up front, you get, or at least I get, the type of peat that I really enjoy. This is on the spectrum on the meaty, savory side of things rather than a band-aid and iodine and then right in the middle is that campfire smoky log for me so that's usually how i categorize the types of peat that i get and this leans a little bit more towards that savory meat burnt meat smoked meat kind of profile and i like that quite a bit and then right behind that you're going to get a healthy amount of sherry the figs dates raisins and plums it comes across as pretty smoky and then right behind it, very sweet. And then because of the dominance of the sherry and the peat, way behind it. I mean, you really have to look for it or think about it, maybe that power of suggestion, but I get some vanilla as well. All around, probably one of my top favorite smelling peated scotches. So let's go ahead and get this thing on the palate and see what I think of it. I'm immediately hit with the ABV, the peat, explodes and then quickly fades away. Well, I wouldn't say quickly, but it fades away. And then you end up getting those underlying tones of vanilla, sherry. I wouldn't say that it's anywhere close to the lighter fruits. It's definitely going to lean more towards those dark raisins, maybe not on the plummy side. And it's definitely not gonna be on, when I say the lighter fruits, I'm not gonna get peaches or, well, I can't say pineapple because it does give me some sort of vibe of a grilled pineapple as well. So my initial notes, I would say savory, meaty peat smoke, dark raisins, grilled pineapple, a little bit of pepper, and then behind all of that, there is a slight amount of vanilla that kind of just gives it a little bit more depth and character. As far as a briny or a salty note would go, I would lean a little bit more towards just standard salt, but not necessarily a seaside brininess. But hey, that's the first sip. You can never trust that first sip, especially with what, 54.2% ABV. Your mouth could be overwhelmed with that ABV. So let's go ahead and go in for a second sip and see if anything else comes out of this. I'm gonna add some water to it and then talk a little bit about Ardbeg. All right, on that second sip, as I was breathing in, I really did get a definite note of vanilla. The peaty portion of it, on that second, third, and consecutive sips, that peatiness starts to drop off a little bit. By no means does it go away. It is definitely still there. So if you are not 
a peated fan, then I would shy away from this, or at least at the beginning. Work your way up to it because this definitely is heavily peated. I do get a little bit of effervescence on the tongue. And then as it's making its way back towards the finish, what I end up getting is an overall sweet note. The vanilla, the grilled pineapple, the sherry notes, all of those linger around along with that peat smoke. It's, it's really good. And then also, just to kind of cap it off, there is always that little bit of salty note as well. I'm gonna add quite a bit of water here. See how this does. And I'm gonna do kind of a quick fire Ardbeg history because there is a lot that is going on with this distillery. I got all of this from their website or one of the articles that actually gave me a timeline of Ardbeg. Again, I am not an expert. This is just me doing some quick internet research and then spewing out the information. So if any of this stuff ends up being wrong, correct me in the comments down below. All right, really quick on the Ardbeg Ugdal. This was actually released in 2023 and it was their first non-age stated release. And now it seems like they have a ton of non-age stated releases. All right, rapid fire history. Founded in 1815 by John McDougall, Thomas Buchanan came around in 1839 and purchased it. Jump forward to 1865 and Colin Hay took over as the distillery owner. Colin Hay was the owner up until 1900 when his son, Colin E. Hay, took over. And then in 1922, the McDougall family took back ownership of the distillery. And just like the majority of all distilleries, there was an economic downturn and then they ended up closing in 1932 to 1935. So this next part is a little bit, not convoluted, but I'm not really, I don't really understand the umbrella ownerships of parent companies and distilleries. But Ardbeg remained under private ownership until 1959. And then this is when Ardbeg Distillery was formed by this investment group that was a partnership between distillers Company Limited and Harmon Walker and Sons. And then eventually those two partnerships took ownership of the distillery. The Harmon Walker side of the distillery eventually took complete ownership in 1977. And then from there, declining production or demand for peated whiskeys put Ardbeg Distillery in a pretty rough spot. And the distillery was forced to close in 1981. And then wouldn't you know it, they reopened again in 1989 under new ownership of Allied Distillers. And apparently this is the time where they decided that they were gonna kind of scrap out the parts of Ardbeg. And I believe Allied Distillers was also part of the Lafroy Distillery and they started using some of the equipment from Ardbeg in Lafroy. And then I think that is actually when they decided that they were either going to tear it down or sell it. And then Glen Morangy came in in 1997 and decided to purchase it, reopened it, and then eventually it was bought by Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy in 2004. So there you go. That's kind of a, I guess, a semi-rapid history of Ardbeg. If there's any other information about Ardbeg's history that you feel is important that people should know, let me know in the comments down below so others can read about it. All right, now that the water has time to incorporate, Let's go ahead and get it on the nose, taste it one more time, and then give this thing a score. All right, with the water, I'm getting a lot more pepper, a little bit more pineapple and pepper, a grilled pineapple. Maybe it's a little bit more on the spicy side now. I get more sherry notes that are coming through on the nose, and the peat notes are a little bit more subdued. Again, don't get me wrong, the peat notes are still dominant. They're just not as dominant without the water. All of the other notes are still there. There's a slight amount of vanilla. I do get the dark raisins, not so much the plums and the figs anymore, but it's more of a dark raisin. And I'm actually picking up a little bit more of malt sweetness as well. Let's go ahead and get it on the palate. Oh yeah, the water definitely calmed down the peatiness. It does come across as a little bit more spicy. That pepper, pineapple, grilled pineapple, burnt pineapple note is coming out, malt, oak, there's a little bit of a tanginess or a saltiness as well. Just like before, that vanilla note is way back behind everything else. Overall, it's a pretty good amount of sweetness, but adding the water has taken away a little bit of the oomph that this had to begin with. Going forward, for me, I would not add water to this. I just like the profile of it without the water. So let's go ahead and move on to the score. If you are new here, my scoring system is out of five stars. 
So let's go ahead and take price out of this and just go with what I think is in the glass. Ardbeg Oudal is one of my favorite peated scotches out there right now. So it's gonna score at a 4.25 for me. So how about the value? If this is a little over $100, it's a non-age stated, but I don't really think that matters. There are fantastic non-age stated scotches out there. So I think that is definitely not going to be part of this whole conversation as far as the value goes. Based on my experience and other peated scotches that I've had, this being $100, I can see myself paying $100 for this. And I understand value for me is gonna be different than you, but in my situation, when this bottle is gone, if I wanna replace for $100, I don't find that to be that big of a deal. So I'm gonna say that the value for this, $100, I'm still gonna put this at 4.25. So price aside, and price being included in this, 4.25 across the board. I think it's a fair price. If you disagree, let me know in the comments down below. And that's all I have for you today. Wherever you're at in your journey, I hope you're enjoying it, and we'll see you next time. Bye.